Hey everyone, happy, happy hour. It's Las Vegas. <laughs> it's always happy hour here, but it's literally happy hour at Snowflake Summit. Day two of theCUBE's coverage of Snowflake Summit 23, live from Caesars Forum in Las Vegas. Lisa Martin, Dave Vellante. Dave, what's your summary of all the conversations we've had about data, data strategy, AI in the last 36 hours? Data matters. Yeah, no data. I think the key is people really, to really get to be a digital business, you got to put data at the core. So you have to have a data strategy that gives everybody access to that data, consistency, coherency across the data platforms. Absolutely, data democratization is no joke. Yep. We've got a couple of guests here. Amit Rai is here, SVP of Data as a Service from Zoom Info. Andy Ruffles, Director, Sales Operations and Strategy at Capital One Commercial Banking. Guys, welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. I can't wait to connect the dots on this one. Yeah, <laughs> Amit, let's start with you. Zoom Info at Snowflake Summit. What's, I'm going to do a Jerry Seinfeld. What's the deal with that? Yep, great question. First of all, thank you for having us here. If you think about Zoom Info, Zoom Info has historically been very successful on the uh, sales and marketing side. We are world's largest B2B commercial data provider when it comes to sales and marketing. The reason we are here at Snowflake is because folks like Andy, who are more on the data analytics side, they are actually using Zoom Info, all the company data, contact data that we have gathered over the last two dec decades. It goes directly inside Snowflake, and then they are able to do predictive modeling, and that's what is, acts as a data foundation for the modern go-to-market engine. So when you think about formographics, technographics, intent data, who is currently in the market, all of that data is directly available to the data analytics and data science team, such that they are able to do total addressable market analysis, ideal customer profile analysis, and they are able to be prescriptive, proactive, rather than reactive and old traditional ways. So right. that's why we are here. Wow, cool stuff. Andy, talk a little bit about your role at, at Cap One and why your work, why did you choose to work with Zoom Info and Snowflake? Yeah, so at Capital One, I'm in the commercial bank and I help drive enablement for our sales team. I would call them RMs, if I say RM, relationship managers. Um, and so for us, for our commercial bankers, it's a relationship business, they have to know a lot about the company. We, we want to provide them the right tools to do prospecting work, find who's out there, as Amit said, like what is the universe? And connecting the dots with third party data, with our internal database that we, we build and grow is you know, imperative. So you know, how, my job is to bring the information to our sales teams as easy as possible, right? And you know, I'm not working with technology, you know, they're not all tech people, so I have to make it simple, get it into delivery method, has to be something that'll meet them where they are. Yeah. And so, we've had a long journey with Zoom Info, and you know, there's a story we'll get to about like some sp specific data that we had, and we were working off spreadsheets, and people were giving us requests, and it was wildly inefficient. And so, our journey started with a, a very simple use case that led us to a much more streamlined and like collaborative you know, place we are today. Before we get into that, yeah. what's the hot products today that, you, that you're, you're, you're marketing? Oh, so, so again, I'm on the commercial side, right. so our hot product is money, right? So you want okay, $100 million. So, you, so you're talking loans, right. But We're so talking loans. What are the hot management. markets? Yep. Is, it, it's not commercial real estate, I, pr I presume? Or? We, we, have, we have a CRE, yep, we have commercial real estate, part of the business. I'm on the more, the middle market banking side. So again, specialty driven, you know, um, middle market companies. So, you talked about really important things. TAM, ideal customer profile, and intent data, yep. right? So, I presume the ICP has changed as interest rates rise, as, as commercial real estate gets, you know, yep. office vacancies are, are open, yep. et cetera, things change. Yep. And so, uh, as we get into it, I'm really interested in how, as the market changes, as the TAM expands or shrinks, as the ICP changes, intent data is you know, constantly changing, how you yeah. deal with all that. So this is, a, this is a fascinating case study. Yeah. Okay, so where'd you start? So the, we, uh, we'll start with intent. So the part where we started with them was we had specific intent. As you said, you know, Zoom Info does a good job of telling what companies are out there, and that's great for our sales team. But to know who is active in those markets, all right? With our big companies, we can go to firms like, say, Bloomberg, right? And they have big data on transactional information. On our smaller private companies that our team tries to work with, very hard to find out you know, who is active in the market. So we work with the team, with Omit and the team at Zoom Info, years back now, building out a way to consume data around UCC file, like liens a company would file, and it's filed state by state. So what that tells us is data, and you can get it, you can go to your local state, every state 
gives you information a little differently. And you could say, hey, show me all the companies that are actively with Capital One, right? That will give you an idea of who's active in the market borrowing money, or you know, borrowing. But the very manual intensive, very specific state by state, so working with a team on delivering a widespread, a one data file, bringing it into our universe, so now instead of 100 different sales teams, RMs, coming to me with a request, we put the data in one place, give them a report, they can get to it themselves. It's in, our, it's in our lake, it's in our, in our world, they can access it out, we can, you know, data analysts can pull it out for them, but it becomes more of that self-service model, um, and we've just made it so much easier for them to interact with this data, and again, it's intent. It's showing them who, who's active. So your question, David, like, I may not be as active now, given what's what going on in markets, but I'm going to be active, right? I, I, it's, it's like, just the scale changes a little bit. I'm always going to be prospecting and this information lets me know who is there. So you're building pipeline. Building pipeline. So what is, what is your ideal customer profile and how is that changing? Uh, I mean, that differs, right? I mean, somebody who's, who is active, somebody who's looking to sometimes grow, but maybe establish. Um, you know, we, we look for revenue size, EBITDA size, industry matters for us, we have some specialties. So again, customer profile can change um, largely, again, by industry, and then the size of that company. And you're, you're loaning tens of millions, or anywhere from small to large, hundreds of millions? Yeah. It, what, it, is, it, is, it, is it big spectrum, or You're is going it? up to billions of dollars in certain cases. But what's the low end, is it, is it? In our business, so yeah, good question. Capital One has a lot of different business segments. We have right. retail, small business, right? In my, my world, our low end is maybe million dollars, right? Okay. So it's So it's pretty low end, then. I mean, can be. Yeah, I can mean, be. a million dollars is a lot of companies out there, even small businesses that can, That's right. can, can tap that type of credit line, right? That's right, that's right. So again, you're trying loans, deposits, right? Full treasury management suite, full cash management suite, right? Capital markets products for those companies. So it is, it's a full commercial So bank. things are tighter right now. I mean, the Fed's obviously tightening. We're listening to them today. They still sound pretty hawkish. Okay, yep. so you'll build pipeline. To, you, you have existing relationships, obviously, and yep. okay. So you want to expand those, yep. and then you want to build new, new relationships, and that's where Zoom sure. Info comes in, That's right? right, that's right. Maybe to deepen where you already are, and then if you're adding new folks in new areas, that's what we use it yeah. for. Mm. Ahmed, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I think just to double click on that, one of the amazing things about B2B that a lot of folks don't know is that getting basic information for companies, like revenue of a company, you said $1 million, employee size, location, industry. When we started our journey with Capital One, they actually had information for only 15% of their low-end customers, one five. That was one of the best case scenario for Capital One. That is actually true even for all the Fortune 500 companies that I've worked till today. Large companies that sell to smaller businesses, even those basic information for revenue, employee size, location, industry, they have no idea about that. So when they partnered with Zoom Info, the number one value that they got was, now they were able to segment close to 70% of their low end business, 70 from 15 to 70%. And that resulted into massive ROI. So in the world of big data that we are talking about, one of the biggest challenges that Capital One had was, they were using spreadsheet siloed systems. When Andy and team got together, one of the things that was a pretty big win for them is, now they use Snowflake as a customer 360 repository where third party data provider like Zoom Info is able to provide them data for all the 32 million active businesses in the United States and more than 100 million locations. So now once you have that data, now you can do predictive modeling, now you can do net new acquisition, now you can serve the existing customers. So that was a pretty big value add, which continues to be very, very like major challenge for almost all the companies that we have talked with. How are you dealing with the changing waves of, of PII and privacy, et cetera? Great question. So, a lot of folks don't know that a lot of these PII things are not applicable when you are talking about business, because Zoom Info is all about business data. What is the revenue of the company? What is the employee size of the company? What is the industry of the company? So that's part number one. Part number two, we treat businesses as humans, meaning what are the people in those companies that are looking for products for your business, not necessarily like behavioral or personal information. So bottom line is, we are able to uncover what are the businesses that are currently in the market for your products. Again, 
PII information is not relevant because we do not want to get into personal information. <laughs> That's number two. Number three, when it comes to privacy security, again, like partnership like Snowflake and things like that, our customers' data never leaves their premise, so data share, security, governance, all of those things becomes applicable when you're using infrastructure like Snowflake. Yeah. So you've replaced snow, uh, uh, spreadsheets, and yeah. now people access Snowflake directly, or you're developing well, we, reports? Yeah, or? we brought via Snowflake in through our, some tool, right? We use Salesforce for reports, right? So we're reporting on there, we have Tableau, we have QuickSight, so we're, but we're connecting our sales team, who they're not going into Snowflake themselves, right. but we give them access to these tools in one of those fashions to access this data. So it's Snowflake's in the back end and hidden. Like. Doing its thing, and, and I'm representing the guys that they don't know any of that stuff right. behind the door, it's closed. They don't care. They just want to see, I'm typing in, I'm in, I'm in uh, where are we? We're in Las Vegas, yeah. I need companies of a certain size in a certain industry Let me see, that are not already in my database. So it connects, not, now it, it's not just a spreadsheet that I get from ZoomInfo, it's connected to what I already know about. And so I can eliminate things I already have and show me stuff mm. I don't have. So huge transformation, Andy. Going from manual spreadsheets that's just kind of like, ow, that hurts, to completely digital backbone, digital transformation. How long did that take and how did you get the cultural and, and, and C-suite buy-in to drive such yeah. massive change? I told him how, how, how angry I was about building spreadsheets all the time. <laughs> yeah, it takes time. Yeah, it you takes got time. salty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, some people like their spreadsheets, right? And so, and they're used to them. And they're easy, right? Well, they are culture. easy. Yes. Right? When you give somebody a spreadsheet, uh, I can follow columns and rows. They're not the ones building those spreadsheets and having to match. So look, I think the idea that, listen, we're, we're giving you good information. We're connecting it now easier than ever to our existing information. And I give it to you whenever you want it, right? You don't have to ask me and I get back to you in a couple days. So I think more real-time access to the data, quicker turnaround, and I can have everybody asking me at the same time via these reports or these tools that are easy to use. So constant feedback back and forth, working with Amit and the team over the years on tweaking it, enhancing the information, um, it just has created a great experience. So yeah, it, you don't do it overnight, but like the information has been valuable and in, in, you know, important to, the, to their growth as what are, some, what are some of the next steps? What are some of the next uh, business units, functions, et cetera, that you guys are going to be working with Zoom Info and stuff I, I like think on. the next step is to really turn on like the insight aspect of it, right? It's one thing to say, hey, I don't have this company in my database, I have this company in my database. The next part is to be some of the stuff that Snowflake is coming up with and I think the teams are like, okay, I got all this stuff, what do you think you should be looking at? And I just open up something and it tells me some suggestions, right? I think that's the next step of connecting third party data with our first person data, first party data, right? And now the, our sales team, hey, here's some suggestions. Yeah. We're not quite there yet, we do that, I do that as a human and my team can do that manually, but I think we can get some more automation to that and make that part be their next big phase. Insights, key. Um, Amit, yeah. last question for you. When you're talking with, with prospective customers like Cap One, what are some of the best practices that you share with them in terms of partnering with third party data providers so that they can really design a data strategy that's going to help them be successful? Yep, great question. So, one of the things that we have seen is, historically, a lot of these back data things have resided with IT, CIOs. Increasingly, we are seeing over time that a lot of the chief data officer are aligning themselves to revenue outcome. Sales and marketing is actually bloodline yeah. for a company, like really, that's how the company grows. So in terms of best practices, what we are seeing is you don't have to roll out a master data management strategy for two years, four years to build your master data for finance and procurement for sales team to get the benefit out of it. So step number one, companies like Snowflake has enabled democratization of all the data. So let's say you are using Salesforce. You can have a bi-directional sync with Salesforce, your Marketo, your Eloqua, directly data getting pushed to Snowflake. We make our data available directly in Snowflake. Literally within months, the chief data officer is in a position where they can go to the CRO and they can tell them that 
you guys want to grow 20% next quarter, 30%, 40%, which is what Zoom Info does, which is what Snowflake is doing, which is what Microsoft is doing, which is what many of our Fortune 500 customers are doing. So not thinking about is in an IT infrastructure, but more of a business outcome. Yes. That's why modern data for revenue outcomes, that's one of the best practices where you don't have to wait for mastering the data for years, but utilizing tools like Snowflake and utilizing your current system, being prescriptive, doing the TAM analysis, getting a full segmentation view of what is your ideal customer profile, having all the data available in the back-end office, now prescribing it to salespeople and giving them lightweight tools that you as a seller are calling and reaching out to these folks all the time rather than figuring out who to call, when to call, yeah. and things like that. Companies don't have time for that. Guys, this is a fantastic use case. Thank you both for coming on, sharing with us what Zoom Info is, the heck they're doing here at Snowflake. Now we get it. Yeah. We appreciate it. We also appreciate it here at the Cap One story. Thanks, guys. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Thanks all for having us. All right, here. our pleasure. Thanks. For our guests and for Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE. You can find all of our Snowflake content and all of our CUBE content at thecube.net. Analysis, editorial, you want it? You got it, 24 by seven on siliconangle.com. Up next, we're going to be talking about public sector for Snowflake, which is new. Stick around, you're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. <laughs>